Hello everyone. Welcome to today's section. My name is Ko Chen Li. Today we are going to show you PHP web-based programming language, the introductions. PHP is a web-based programming language which runs on the server. Most ISPs now offer support for PHP and you can do very powerful things with it. You can save data in files, such as guestbooks, on the server. Interact with SQL databases. Accept and read user input in HTML controls like test field, checkboxes, and so on. Set and read cookies even draw graphics on the server, such as interactive stock charts, and send them back to the browser. To get more power for your website, you need to understand how PHP works and what PHP can bring to you. And we will start with the topic what is PHP and the basic concepts of PHP. In these sections, we will be looking at the different types of variables used in PHP, which to use and when, and also how to convert between the different types. We will also be looking at operators these are things that have any effects on variables, such as adding, subtracting, and multiplying. And this section is designed to give you complete information on how PHP's variables work. You need to understand some of the more complicated parts, such as references or variable variables. Unless you really want full comprehension of the language, the topics covered here are what types of data are available to you, references, typecasting, and variable variables. Operators such as plus, minus, multiply, and divide, and script variables preset variables, script constants, and preset constants. The original release of PHP was created in the middle of the 90s as a way of making common web tasks easier. Back then, the main goal was to have the minimum amount of logic as possible. In order to achieve results, and this led to PHP being HTML-centric, that is, PHP code was embedded inside HTML. The first popular version of PHP was called PHP FI 2.0 for personal home page form interpreters. The current version is the PHP 5. PHP 5 was a big step forward for the language. Although admittedly not as big as the jump from PHP 3 to PHP 4. The release is focused on language maturity and offer a lot of new functionalities that has simply been missing from previous versions simply because the language was a little too simple to properly support larger projects. PHP 5 brought with it huge steps forward for object-oriented scripts. 
Developers are now able to declare how their objects may be used, which makes it easier for one developer to work with another's code. And furthermore, there is a wide variety of functions available for objects that make them much more flexible and easy to work with. Unified constructors are only available from V5 upwards. And PHP 5 also brought with it new error checkings in the form of try-catch, which are something that programmers from other languages have been enjoying for a long time. And furthermore, objects are now always handled as references in order to help programmers who just do not understand how objects work. And the biggest improvements, though, were in the extensions. Simple XML has landed, which is a fast and easy to learn way to interact with XML documents. And there is also a FRED file database API SQLite, a new SOAP extension, and MySQL improved, and a lot more. And most of the latest distributions of Linux come with PHP. So we, we assume that it has been installed and set up on your ISP and is being parsed correctly through your web server of choice. Although you can run PHP scripts via the command line and we will be using the browsers and therefore a web server for these sections. And you can follow along by uploading your PHP files to a web server on the internet if you had one. And we are using the default installation of Apache 2 on our local servers. So because we find it easier and quicker to write and test PHP on a local machine instead of having to upload files via FTP each time. If you require installation and set up instructions or guides for your local machine, we recommend reading the installation menus on the official PHP site or there were hundreds of installation guides written for pretty much every flavor of Linux. Simply search Google for your distributions if the official guide doesn't take all the boxes. And now we get to the fun part of working with and writing our first PHP script. Here is a first PHP script, first.php. And note that PHP scripts has the extension .php. It runs the functions that comes with PHP, PHP info, which gives us some details about PHP installations as shown in the slide. When used to output HTML content, PHP is embedded inside HTML in Code Island. The most common way to open and close PHP code blocks is by question mark PHP and question mark. And then markup is there so the servers can tell the differences between code is supported to execute as PHP and as HTML. 
and because you can use HTML in your scripts as long as you surround your PHP with question mark, open question mark PHP and close question mark. As shown in the slide. And we can put PHP code inside the regular HTML structures. The result is shown in the slide too. And one key advantage to using PHP as opposed to some other solutions is that PHP code is all executed at the server with the client only receiving the results of the script. What this means is that users never see your PHP source code because they are never sent it. They only see what you want them to see. Owing to its low learning curve, easy maintenance, and overall fast execution time, it is rare to find PHP is not the best choice for web applications, home pages, big and small, database front ends on the web, command line shell scripts where you want extra functionality, and even basic GUI developments are all popular use for PHP. And it sells at Lamborghini. And like any other computer language, PHP can use variables. And as with JavaScript, you don't need to formally declare variables before you use them. In PHP, variables begins with a dollar sign. PHP has seven types of variables and all but one hold a specific class of information. The seven types are streams, integers, floats, booleans, arrays, objects, and resources. And you will be using them all throughout this book. So it is worthwhile remembering, remembering what each do. Strings holds characters, literally a string of characters, such as A, ABC, Jack and Jill went up the hill, etc. Strings can be as short or as long as you want. There's no limit to size. And integers holds whole numbers either positive or negative, such as 1, negative 20, etc. And there is a maximum limit to the size of the integers. And froze holds fractional numbers as well as very high integer numbers, such as 4.2. And Booleans simply hold true or false. Booleans are, in fact, just integers behind the things. And PHP considers the number zero, zero to be false and everything else to be true. And arrays are a special variable type in that they hold multiple values. Arrays can be quite complicated, and so are converted in detail in their own chapter. And objects are complex variables that have multiple values, but also their own functions. And resources are anything that is not PHP data. And this might be picture data you have loaded from a file the result of an SQL query, etc. And resources are used like any other variables. 
with the key difference that you should generally remember to free up your resources when you are finished with them. And most data types are freely convertible to most other data types, which makes PHP loosely typed. Here is a piece of code that should illustrate the point nicely. That scripts will output 32. Despite the fact that the first variable, my string, is a string, whereas the, uh, the others is an integer. PHP will automatically attempt to convert the non-integer operand, my string, into an integer. And we'll find that it is, in fact, an integer inside a string. If it tries to convert a string like Wombat to an integer, PHP will simply return the value 0. And note that operand is one of those terms you learned at school and forget the minutes you leave. An operand is something, in this case, my strings, upon which a mathematic functions. In this case, plus is being performed. So in my string, plus my integers, plus is the operators. My strings and my integer are the operands. And PHP comes with lots of built-in operators to let you work on data, such as the additions and the subtractions and so on. Operators perform actions on our operands. They modify values of input. For example, in the equations 2 plus 3, the 2 and the 3 are both operands, and the plus is the operators. And there are three types of operators, unary, binary, and ternary. And unary operators just text, text just one operand. Binary operators take two operands, and ternary takes three. As you can see, the plus operators used to add numerical values is a binary operator. It takes two variables as input. And there are a large number of operators available for your use of which perhaps about 14 are important to remember. First, the most important operators. Do not worry about remembering them all straight away. There will be examples to help you along afterwards. And most operators are same as JavaScript. Plus, plus and minus are the operators that increments or de decrements a value. And equal is the operators that assigns operands 2 to operand 1. And and is logical and. That tells us whether two sets of conditions are true. The third uh, expression they use this bracket to separate what is going on. This is important. As the equations 5 plus 5 minus 5 plus 5 can be taken in more than one way, such as 5 plus 5 minus 5 plus 5 
which is 10. And there are some equations, such as, such as equation 5, where brackets are not needed. Layer 10 times 5 minus 5 can only be taken to mean 10 times 5 minus 5. Because of the mathematical rules of precedence, multiplication is considered more important than subtraction. Despite each operator having very specific precedence, it is, most, most be it is best to use brackets in order to make your meanings clearer. Expressions inside brackets are always evaluated first. And you can use any number of brackets in order to get the expression correct. And note that if you are rushing through this, you may just have missed the important recommendations. And despite each operator having very specific precedence, it is still best to use brackets in order to make your meaning clear. If you don't use brackets, you force readers of your code to have memorized the operator precedence and associatively tables, which is crazy. And every time you don't use brackets in a potentially confusing situation. And if you find yourself setting the variables for convenience and never changing it during a script, the chances are you should be using a constants instead. Constants are like variables, except that once they are defined, they cannot be undefined or changed. And they are constants, as the name suggests. And in many languages, constants are faster than variables, and so are recommended. But this is not the case as much in PHP. Although they are perhaps a small amount faster, the primary advantage to using constants is the fact that do not have a data sign at the front, and so are visible, visibly different, different from variables. And furthermore, constants are automatically global across your entire script. Unlike variables, to set a constant, use the define functions. It takes two parameters, with the first being the name of the constants to set, and the second being the value to which you wish to send it. For example, this following lines of code sets the variable current time to be the return value of the time functions. Then print it out. And before you even get control in your script, PHP has set a number of variables for you containing information about the server, the environment, and the request from your visitors. These are stored in the super global arrays for you. And you can get a fairly complete list of what is available by using the PHP info output. And the most commonly used variables, all of which are stored in the server super global, are as follows. And of those, HTTP referrals and HTTP user agents are the most important. As you can use these to tell an awful lot about your visitors 
and take the appropriate actions. When that page is loaded up in your browsers by typing the URL in by hand, you didn't click any links to get layer test is shown because HTTP referrals has not been sent, set. However, if once the page is loaded and you click the click me link, the page will reload itself and this time HTTP referrals will be set and a new message should appear. Although it can be spoofed. And HTTP referrals is generally a good way to make sure a visitor can find a certain page. And whether you want to use that to say, you can't download my files because you can't find another site or welcome Google users, it's down to you. But there is a lot of scope for ideas. And this is for today's sections. Thank you.